endurance and stamina in the water is important for surfers to allow them to stay in the water for longer, catch more waves, get more practice and just simply have more fun. There is so much more to this than just being fitter, however, and oftentimes the techniques that we see the more experienced surfers employ are more about their efficiency of their energy and how they use their energy in the water to their advantage, rather than just being able to go and go and go. In the last edit of the Sunday Glide, we discussed four ways to ensure we had more energy in the water, looking at techniques to conserve energy and how to be more effective, which included understanding the conditions in the lineup, timing the sets on the paddle out, and how to position more effectively out in the water. This week, we're going into a more in-depth look into building and conserving energy to keep you surfing out in the water for longer. This will be covering everything to do with your body, the board, as well as your wave selection. So let's get into it. Now, we couldn't do this video without covering the obvious, which is, in order to decrease our feelings of fatigue and exhaustion in the water, we can't pass up getting stronger and getting fitter. Now, the advice for fitness for surfing, I could go 10 layers deep with. As a physiotherapist myself and strength and conditioning for surfing being a massive passion of mine, but today we'll run through some of the fundamentals. Fitness for surfing needs to be specific and we need to know what we're training and why. The two key categories will be cardiovascular fitness and strength. This can of course be dissected further, but we'll focus on these two broader categories for today as these are the most important. Cardiovascular fitness, so how our heart and lungs utilize oxygen over prolonged periods of more intense activity is obviously really, really important. Now, out in the water, this is going to come into play and feel like when, you've, when you're really puffed and exhausted, like you've been for a big run or a big swim, which I'm sure we've all felt out in the water many, many times. And so this is something that we've definitely got to get on top of. We can reduce this, we can minimize this, and this is by training our cardiovascular system, getting the heart and lungs working. To do this, we can actually be pretty broad and general about the form of cardio that we do, which can be running, swimming, riding, these are all going to be things which can help. Just try to pick a form of cardiovascular exercise that you would firstly somewhat like to do and can do, and ideally try to get this in a few times a week, maybe starting with twice and building this up to three to four times a week, ensuring you're recovering well and that you're getting proper advice from someone about the frequency and intensity of your training here. Going on from the previous edit of the Sunday Glide, this can actually be great for the beginner surfers, which as we spoke about, maybe choosing to be a little bit more selective with their surf sessions. And so choosing this aerobic or cardiovascular activity to complete to help them uh, outside of the water for their performance in the water on their off days. So if you've got the, the days off, go for a, a run or a swim and try to improve or use your time out of the water to help your time in the water. And it's a good thing, there's a good thing to be said for actually starting quite light as well and then steadily building your way back up uh, for both just understanding your recovery and how you're tolerating the activity and then also to make sure we're minimizing our risk of injury as well. Now, the other part of this is muscular fatigue, and to improve this, we must focus on our strength and endurance training. Regarding how this manifests out in the lineup, instead of feeling puffed and exhausted, here, the muscles themselves will start to feel heavy and like they're unable to work to the same capacity, such as the arms and shoulders for your paddling, or the lower back holding our arch in the back whilst paddling, or even the legs feeling more fatigued and tired. This is a strength and endurance problem, and something that we need to fix with strengthening. So for paddling, there are some key muscle groups that you are going to want to think about strengthening. And now again, this is for informational purposes only. So if you are looking at devising a strengthening program of some sorts or an endurance program of some sorts, then make sure that you go seek advice from a health professional, of course. Um, but the key ones are going to be the rhomboids, which are the muscles right between the shoulder blades, which help you to retract 
We've also got muscles such as the uh, rotator cuff, um, specifically your subscapularis, which does your internal rotation, and infraspinatus, which does your external rotation. And your lumbar extensors, or this big bulky muscle that sits either side of your spine, is really important for also our paddling posture and making sure we're not overusing the shoulders, which can lead to our things like shoulder impingements and so forth. And then our lats as well. Of course, these are really, really dominant and powerful in our paddling, and we've got to have strong lats if we're going to be proficient and effective paddlers as well. So these are going to be really, really important areas to strengthen, uh, to build up our strength for our paddling and endurance for our paddling as well. Of course, a great strong core for stability and support is always going to help. And then we also want to be training our lower body in movements such as the squat to get our glutes, hamstrings and quads firing. If you do find that your legs become fatigued out in the water after your surf, as well as just for general strengthening purposes. Now, obviously this is a massive passion of mine and you probably won't be uh, surprised to hear me say that I think this should be something that everyone starts to do if you're not already for your surfing. Now, this is just some beginner advice, but I think this would be really good for you to kind of take away and be able to implement from here. And this is really useful, um, for, again, feeling less fatigued, less exhausted out in the water, but also for things like keeping you more agile in the water. So you're able to nail your pop-up from the start to the very finish of the session, as well as make sure that you're more precise with your movements so you're not stumbling over your feet with your cross steps towards the end of the session and things like that. Um, so go implement this into your own training and see how this improves your fatigue in the water. So get moving, get strengthening. Along with this, good paddle efficiency and paddle technique is always going to be critical. In my last video, I actually discussed some of the helpful tips and paddling strategies uh, for getting into waves. So go and check that out if you haven't already. A common problem surfers face, which contributes to their exhaustion in the water, is their paddle efficiency. On shortboards, it may be not being able to catch waves effectively. And on longboards, it may be that we don't have our paddle technique optimized, or we're having difficulties pushing through waves and using more advanced techniques, such as the duck dive and the turtle roll. Now, this is where board selection can come into play. A lot of the time, what I see is people may be getting uh, stuck on a board that's a little bit too small for them for the level of surfing that they're at. And what this means is essentially they, unless they have the paddling technique down pat, they're gonna have a lot of trouble and a lot of inefficiencies when they're out in the water with regards to paddling, uh, getting where they need to be in the lineup, and of course, getting onto waves as well. In the early stages of surfing, moving onto a longboard or something with a bit more volume, like a mid-length with a bit of a thicker rail, can go a long way to allowing us to glide through the water more smoothly and efficiently with our paddles, and therefore get into more waves and decrease the the limitations of our paddling technique and how this may be impacting our ability to get from A to B in the lineup or catching waves. Paddle efficiency, as well as not understanding exactly how to get the board planing correctly through the water when we're paddling, becomes a really difficult problem when we're starting out with our surfing, especially on shortboards. A lot of the time, surfers can become extremely frustrated with being unable to position themselves quickly from place to place out in the lineup, or with being unable to catch lots of waves, and this is largely due to the board that they're on. So it's not that we can't start on a smaller board, but it may just mean that we do need to persist through a little bit more of a slower and frustrating phase of our surfing where we need to get our paddling technique really down pat so that we can, again, uh, steer away from those inefficiencies. But again, this might be a little bit of a slower process and something that we just need to get on top of because it is a prerequisite in order to be able to catch waves and navigate the lineup effectively, unfortunately. Um, but that being said, there are some inefficiencies to longboards themselves as well. Obviously, duck diving and getting through waves is much more difficult. And so there can definitely be some separate inefficiencies here as well. My recommendations to conserve energy and catch more waves is to start on something that has a little bit more volume in the rail until we feel like we're really, really confident with our paddling. This means being able to paddle efficiently and effectively and being more dynamic out in the lineup and not feeling like your paddle efficiency is a limiting factor to you catching waves and positioning yourself in the lineup where you want to be. From here, it's a much better idea to have laid out the foundations of being able to navigate the lineup effectively to then move onto a smaller board. This can be your preference of shortboard, high performance longboard, or whatever you're wanting to progress with. 
Now, these are just some recommendations for some of the common problems that we might see servers have and being able to, I guess, use our energy more effectively in the water. But by all means as well, uh, the board you love is the board you love, so that is the most important thing. This is just some uh, ideas of how we can improve our paddle efficiency and our energy use in the water. Now the final, and I might say the most important thing that we need to speak about today is actually being more selective with the waves that we're trying to catch out in the lineup. Now this is a big, big problem that I see uh, for surfers starting out and trying to progress their surfing and especially for the Groms out there who are actually trying to catch anything that moves. This comes down to firstly being super keen to catch waves, but potentially an inability to correctly assess whether the wave is going to line up and offer what we're actually looking for. One of the key things we see with really good surfers and a reason why they don't get so tired out in the lineup is firstly being able to navigate the lineup correctly and having implemented most of the things that we have previously spoken about, but it's also about being patient and waiting for the wave that's going to offer the wall that they need and knowing when to say no to waves as well. Now, this is really important to get right if we're looking to improve our surfing because it's not just that more waves equals more improvement or getting better at our surfing, but it's actually more quality repetition of the specific individual maneuvers that we're trying to do, whether this be cutbacks, cross-stepping, nose riding, or even our pop-ups. We need to get the waves that actually facilitate and allow for the maneuvers that we're trying to complete, not simply just catching anything. So I challenge you in the next few surfs, if this is something that you're looking to work on, have a look at the waves before you go out and identify the ones that look good and the ones that you want to be on. And then challenge yourself to wait for these waves to come through and to catch these. This will give you a better repetition of the maneuvers that you're wanting to do. And I often think as well, the hallmark of a good session is how many good waves you're able to catch and how many good maneuvers you're able to do, not necessarily just the quantity of waves. And to this point, I actually think that catching more waves that don't offer the opportunity and the walls or the sections that we need to facilitate the maneuvers that we're trying to complete are actually a hallmark of a bad surf session. So it is important to make sure we are more selective to catch the right waves to allow for the correct maneuvers that we're trying to do. On top of this, it will be much more exhausting if we're constantly paddling for and catching waves that just close out. And then we will also increase the number of times that we're needing to paddle out the back only to catch more waves that are closing out and not offering the sections that we want. And this is how we get tired in the water. So being more selective is a critical thing in the water and a big thing that we need to learn to advance our surfing in general. All right, thanks so much for watching again today, guys. Really, really appreciate it. And as always, I hope that you're able to pick a few things from this uh, to improve your own surfing, as well as just keep you more energized out in the water. Um, if you do have any requests or recommendations for things you'd like to see in the next edit of the Sunday Glide or the upcoming videos, then please make sure to put those down in the comments below. Um, and I can, yeah, have a bit of a chat to you about those as well. But other than that, we'll uh, catch you on the next one.